Welcome back. Uh, in the in the last video, uh, we started looking at experimental studies. So this video will mainly be on experimental studies. Uh, so let me again recall what that is. Um, uh, in an experimental study, uh, a, a a deliberate treatment or uh, a condition is imposed on uh, these subjects and the response uh, from the treatment is measured and recorded while uh, influential factors are controlled. Typically individuals are randomly assigned to groups, uh, a, a, you know, typically a ex experiment group that receives the treatment and a control group that doesn't receive the treatment. Um, the required time for an experimental study tends to be higher than that of uh, observational studies. Uh, experimental studies tend to be more expensive than observational studies. Uh, only experimental studies can be used uh, convincingly to draw cause and effect relationship. Couple of terminologies. Uh, regarding experimental studies. Uh, experimental units, uh, these are the individuals on which the treatment or on which the experiment is done. Um, they are called subjects when, if they are human. A treatment is a, is a condition that is imposed on the uh, subjects. Factors, uh, these are the expl ex explanatory variables in the experiment. Uh, outcomes, the the uh, the measured variables used to compare the treatments. So outcomes uh, are the measured variables used to compare the uh, treatments. Um, level a specific value. Level means a specific value of a factor. For example, if we give two different doses of a drug uh, in an experiment, then uh, we say that. Uh, we say that uh, we are testing uh, two levels of a of a factor of the factor. Uh, here's an example. So um, so the treatment uh, may be the administration of a drug um, or or following a diet or a exercise program or completing a prescribed activity. Um, so. So again, uh, you know what is the what is the meaning of the word treatment? It means it could it could mean the uh, it could mean uh, that we are giving a drug, um, uh, or it could mean that the subjects uh, are are uh, are to follow a diet or a exercise program, or it could mean you know the subjects must complete a pre prescribed activity. Um, so, if, as an example, if we are, let's say we are looking at the effect of a diet or a exercise program on blood pressure, and then the group one would be people on, on the diet or exercise program, let's say for six months, group two would be people who wouldn't uh, uh, follow the diet or the uh, exercise program. And then um, uh, we would be uh, the, the response variable here would be the blood pressure and measurements. So we'll be we'll, we'll be measuring the blood pressure of, of of the people in the two groups, and then we will uh, compare the measurements of from group one with that of the measure uh, with with the measurements from group two. Um, here is another example. So here, the study of sickle cell uh, anemia. So here, the subjects would be patients. Let's say 300 patients. Uh, the factors or treatments here would be hydrox uh, hydroxyurea uh, and uh, placebo or a dummy pill. Uh, and the response variable uh, would be the number of uh, episodes of pain. So group one, uh, 150 patients uh, would be uh, are there in the group one who will uh, receive the drug and um, 150 will be in group 2 who will receive the dummy pill. 
uh, controlled environment versus uh, uncontrolled env environment. So a controlled env environment is like a lab, uh, and when you have a, when you when you uh, carry out the experiment in a controlled environment, um, you can avoid the effect of lurking variables. Um, uh, uh, more easily, and then out. If it is a, if it is an uncontrolled environment, then the the high the, there would be higher likeliness of lurking variables. Comparative uh, uh, experiments. So, comparative experiment means uh, these are experiments where uh, where subjects or individuals. Uh, or the experimental units are divided into groups, um, and the results from the groups are uh, are uh, 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 are compared. So, so we, you compare the response to a treatment to another treatment, maybe or no treatment, or a placebo, or any combination of the above. Uh, and the comparative experiments are the best way to. Uh, uh, avoid uh, con confounding. Uh, placebo effect uh, means uh, uh, it refers to the apparent uh, health improvement, uh, not due to a treatment, but to the but to the patient's uh, uh, perceived belief in in improvement. So a lot of the times, for example, uh, whenever my uh, mother. Uh, goes to her uh, doctor uh, after she comes back. She already feels uh, much better. So the 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 placebo effect is believed to have therapeutic results on up to thirty five percent of patients. And we also know with, you know the the therapeutic results like uh, uh, when when my son let's say uh, falls down and. Uh, cuts his skin or something, and then you know he comes back, and uh, I will let's say hug him or kiss him or um, um, you know things like that that you 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 try to make your child feel better, and then you know the, that has an immediate effect of that they feel better. So that's also like a placebo effect. It can sometimes ease the symptoms of asthma uh, uh, a pain um, and and even 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 uh, um, symptoms of heart attacks uh, among patients who believe their health will get worse uh, an opposite or a negative placebo effect may be observed so if you have if you, if, you, if there is a patient who who is expecting his his uh, health to uh, health to uh, get worse then you know then he might actually feel worse um, so again the word control uh, so we talked about a control group uh, a control refers to a refers to a component of an experiment where uh, no treatment is administered in a group of cases um, uh, to serve as a, a reference mark for the actual uh, treatment A placebo is a dummy treatment such as a sugar pill. A placebo is given to ensure that the response to the actual treatment is due to the actual treatment and not the subject's uh, apparent uh, treatment. Okay, so designing uh, controlled uh, experiments uh, and I'm going to start with uh, a little bit of history. So Sir Ronald Fisher is known as the as the father of statistics. He worked at uh, Rothamsted uh, Experimental Station in the United Kingdom for 14 years since 1919, uh, where he evaluated the success of various uh, fertilizer uh, treatments. Uh, Fisher realized. that the agricultural experiments were uh, poorly designed and and there were too many factors affecting the results that were uncontrolled 
Uh, for example, in one experiment, uh, fertilizer was applied to a field one year and, and um, not in another year, and the yield of grain produced in the two years were compared. Well, it may seem well and good, but uh, there, there are, there are, you know, there are plenty of reasons, uh, plenty of uh, confounding variables here. Uh, you know, it may have rained more uh, or been sunnier during different years, right? So, so one year may it may have rained more, uh, another year it may have been uh, there may have been a drought. Um, so, weather is a confounding variable here and the seeds used may have different uh, may have differed between the two years as well so you may not you know you may not you may not have used the same seeds uh, okay so uh, in so another so he, in another experiment uh, there he saw that fertilizer was was applied to one field and not to a nearby field in the same year. So they they uh, for they applied uh, so they, they applied fertilizer. So the the year was the same. They applied the fertilizer in one of the fields, but not to a uh, nearby field. Now again, there are there you know we see some confounding variables here. Uh, you know the two fields. Uh, who is to say that? You know they have the same soil type. Uh, um, you know, the, uh, you know how you know how can you ensure that the two fields had the same amount of water, same kind of drainage, or or even uh, on also history of uh, previous use. Use. Um, so. So here is Fisher's uh, solution. So, uh, what he suggested was is what we call a randomized comparative experiments. So in the same field, same year, so same field, same year, apply fertilizer to uh, randomly spaced plots within the field um, and analyze uh, uh, plants from similarly treated plots together um, so here you can in the picture you can see so let's say this is a field and you randomly pick so you divide the field into small uh, small sections and then you randomly pick a um, uh, bunch of uh, uh, some of the sections where you apply the fertilizer and you don't apply uh, fertilizer in the in the remaining uh, sections and then you plant your seeds and so on and then you, at the end, you analyze plants from similarly treated uh, plots together. Um, and Fisher's solution here minimizes the confounding effect of variation. Um, you know, it doesn't completely uh, 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 take, take, it doesn't completely get rid of confounding effect, but it minimizes the confounding effect of variation within the field in drainage and soil composition and weather on 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 yield okay so so that was his uh, his uh, solution here and so so to talk about randomizing your experiment we know I'm gonna now talk about how how do you do that So here is a table of random digits. So imagine that you have a big bowl of a big bowl of uh, uh, tickets, and each ticket has a, ha a has a digit written on it. And then you juggle those uh, tickets in the bowl, and then um, one at a time you pick one, and you look at the digit there, and you write that down. So, 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 so imagine that you have a process where uh, each digit is equally likely to be picked, uh, and then you you create a table like this by by that process. So this the first column is basically just uh, line numbers, and uh, this is to help us read the uh, read the lines. The uh, 
and then the random digits start. Uh, so in the in, in line number and one one, these are the random digits. So usually, and yeah, the we pick put a gap here just so that it is easy to read. But um, there is no need for gaps here. Um, and so we are assuming that these digits were uh, picked uh, picked in, in you know in a randomly. Uh, so that uh, each digit is equally likely to be picked. Um, so to randomize an experiment, uh, use a table of random digits or the random sampling function of a statistical software. Uh, how to? So let's look at how we can choose how we can randomly choose n individuals from a group of. Uh, uh, capital N individual. So let's say we have a population of size capital N, right? There are capital N individuals in the population, and then we are trying to pick uh, N individuals, uh, uh, small N individuals uh, from the population of uh, cases. So to do so, we are going to first label each of the uh, of the uh, individuals uh, with a number, uh, so that's uh, typically from uh, zero to n minus capital N minus one, or from zero to capital N. Um, take a take a list of random digits, break the, uh, and then break the list into numbers with the same number of digits as in n. So if, if capital N is 233, three, then its length is 3. Uh, if capital N is 18, then its length is 2. So if capital N has two digits, then we uh, break the list of random digits into numbers with, uh, with, the, with the two digits. So we're, that is, we're going to read the random number. We're going to read the numbers from the random uh, uh, digits table uh, two digits at a time. Uh, so then you you read the list in the sequence and the first n numbers uh, corresponding to labels in our group of n are are selected. Uh, pick as your sample the n individuals with labels uh, selected in the previous uh, step. So let me explain this uh, in an example. So let's say. Uh, we have 20, we have 20 individuals, so capital N, the size of the population is 20. And uh, from that uh, uh, 20 individuals, we want to randomly pick uh, five individuals. Uh, so to 20, uh, the population size has two digits in it. Um, we are going to label the individuals uh, with numbers 0, 1 to 0, 1 to 20. Uh, so let's say 0, 1 is Allison, 0, 2 is Amy, and so on, and 20 is Victoria. Uh, next, uh, we are going to the, the number, um, so the number 20 is two digits long, so, so since we are labeling the individuals with numbers, with the two digit numbers uh, so we're going to we're going to have to uh, read the uh, read the uh, random digits in the table uh, two digits at a time in other words so we break down the list of random digits into numbers that are two digits long uh, start at any line and column say line 1 or 3 and column 1 um, and then start reading those numbers. So, so line one or three, column one is where I'm starting to read. So this uh, this uh, digits that I have, I'm gonna break them into digits of two. So 45, 46, 77, 17, 09, 77, 55, 80, and so on. So I break I broke them broke them down into digits of two. Uh, and then. Um, and, and then once I have done that, now I'm going to try read through the random uh, random numbers uh, two digits at a time, uh, starting with line uh, 103 and on, and 
and then we select the first five uh, uh, two-digit numbers that match the numbers assigned to the students. So, so we, as we read through, okay, 17 is the first number I find uh, where which is associated with one of the individuals here. So Ramon is uh, is uh, 17. So we pick Ramon in our sample. Uh, the next number is 09 that that uh, matches one of the labels of the individuals here. So 09 is Henry. Uh, the, so we pick Henry in the sample and then we keep reading uh, through and then you see that we don't see any matching labels until we get to 13 and 13 is uh, Mo um, and and then a 7 and 02 7 is George and 02 is Amy so then um, then uh, in, in our sample will contain uh, Amy George Henry Mo and Ramon Uh, the principles of experimental design, what are they? Uh, uh, control, you must control the effects of lurking variables on the response variable uh, simply by uh, comparing two or more uh, treatments. Uh, always randomize the assignments of subjects to the treatments. Uh, replicate each treatment uh, on enough many uh, subjects to reduce the chance variation in the in the result. Uh, an observation that would rarely occur by chance is known as statistically uh, significant. That is, if the value of a response uh, due to a treatment uh, is uh, higher than you would expect by chance, uh, then we say that the response is statistically uh, significant. All right, so uh, let's look at what is called completely randomized uh, uh, experiment. Uh, individuals, so in a, in a, in a completely randomized uh, uh, experimental design, individuals are randomly assigned to groups, and then the groups are randomly assigned to treatments. So you have, uh, you randomly assign this, the uh, uh, the uh, the experimental units to uh, one you know to to the groups and then once you have done that then again you randomly assign the treatments uh, to to the groups and then and then uh, at the end we uh, compare the uh, so here uh, we have uh, we are looking at a diet on the weight gain of rats so um, so the rats are divided into two groups randomly and then uh, randomly we assign the new diet or uh, and the other group uh, is getting the standard diet and then at the end we compare the weight gain of the groups. Um, so basically random assignment of groups, uh, ran randomly assign uh, subjects to the groups and then randomly assign treatments to the groups. Um, the design of a study is biased if it systematically favors certain outcomes. Uh, for example, a, a radio host, uh, ADIS Music, NPR, or Rush Limbo, uh, asking its audience to vote for their favorite something, right? Well, uh, if, you know, obviously people who listen to ADIS Music, they love ADIS Music. So they will always... Uh, 
uh, vote favorably toward favorably toward ADIS music and somebody you know listening to NPR or Rush Limbo will 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 be so you know when you listen to a radio channel that means you you really uh, uh, you, you you really like that channel and because uh, you tend to agree with uh, most of that uh, the host of that channel and so um, so that uh, you know if you if you're collecting data in this way uh, then uh, obviously the uh, the study is going to uh, systematically favor a, a a specific outcome the best way to exclude biases from an experiment is to uh, randomize the design. Uh, both the individuals and treatments are assigned uh, randomly. Double blind experiment. So this is an experiment. So first of all, this is a, uh, you know, this is an experiment um, uh, where a, uh, so a double blind experiment is one in which the neither the subjects nor the uh, nor the researcher or the experimenter know which individuals got uh, which treatment until the experiment is uh, completed. Uh, the goal is to avoid uh, forms of placebo effects and biases based on interpretation. So a lot of, um, a lot of the times a researcher uh, believes uh, that the treatment is going to work so as a result, they when they view the results, they automatically view the results in a positive way, uh, favor, fra you know, in a favorable to the, uh, to the they look at the results uh, uh, as a fa a favoring the the treatment. So even even the experimenter may have uh, placebo effects. Um, so. So we may even observe uh, pl placebo effects on, on, uh, uh, on the researcher himself or herself. The replication, uh, the best way to make sure your conclusions are robust is to replicate your experiment, do it over. Replication, that is, you, you want to do it a couple of times. The replication ensures that particular results are not due to uh, uncontrolled factors or errors of manipulation. Um, when we uh, are designing the experiment, we have to make sure uh, we, we think about whether the subjects or treatments or the setting of an experiment realistically, uh, realistically duplicate the conditions we really want to study. Uh, so let's look at an example. Let's say we want to know how how do layoffs at a workplace uh, affect the workers who remain on the job. Um, and so psychologists then to study this uh, this uh, uh, to answer this question, psychologists ask student subjects to proofread a text for extra credit, then let go of the workers who were actually accomplices of the experimenters. Uh, uh, and some subjects were told that those let go had performed poorly, uh, which was treatment one. Others were told that not all could be kept and that it was just luck that they were kept. And, um, and, others, uh, and, and others let go. Uh, treatment too. So can we be sure that the reactions of the students are the same as those of workers who survive a layoff? So in other words, does the experiment you see here uh, realistically uh, duplicate the conditions we really want to study, which is the effect of layoffs um, on, on workers? Another example is, let's say we want to study the effects of hairspray on rats um, uh, to determine uh, what will happen to women with big hair. Um, so is that, is that realistic? Um, so, so questions about uh, realism should be asked when, when this, the, the experiment is being uh, designed. A, a block or a uh, stratified design um, 
uh, is the following. So in, in, in a block or a stratified design, subjects are divided into groups or blocks uh, prior to experiments uh, to test hypotheses about the differences between the groups. So, so maybe if we are looking at a drug and maybe the drug affects male and female uh, the subjects differently. So in that case, it's better that we we divide the subjects by gender. So that would be like a block design. So you you divide the subjects say uh, by gender, so uh, men and women, and then uh, and the randomly assign the men into however however many groups you need, and then and however and, and randomly assign each group to a treatment and then you compare the results uh, from those groups and you do the same thing for for the uh, women uh, subjects so notice that we are only comparing the results for uh, for the groups uh, with uh, with the female subjects and we are also we are separately comparing the results for groups with uh, male um, subjects. Here's the last uh, um, so this will be the uh, last uh, design uh, uh, the experimental designs matched pairs so so matched pairs design so here we choose the pairs of subjects that are closely matched, uh, let's say by same sex or height or weight or age or race. And within each pair, uh, I randomly assign who will receive the who will receive which treatment. So again, uh, subjects are uh, we choose uh, we choose the pairs of subjects that are closely matched, and then within each pair we randomly assign who will receive uh, which uh, treatment. It is uh, also possible to just use a single person and give the two treatments to this person over time in random order. So in this case, the matched pair is just the same person at different points in time. The most closely matched pair studies use identical twins. All right, so here's an example, and you're going to have to see uh, what kind of experimental design was used. A researcher wants to see if there is a significant difference in resting pulse rates between men and women. 28 men and 24 women had their pulse rate measured at rest in the lab. So here uh, we have basically uh, we are basically have, we're looking at um, uh, you know the uh, the relationship between um, gender and uh, pulse rate. So so we have. Uh, gender so that's the factor one well, that is one factor and the factor has two levels that is male and female and uh, this is a, a stratified random sample uh, by uh, by gender um, many dairy cows now receive injections of BST a hormone intended to spar greater greater milk production the milk production of 60 uh, cows was uh, recorded before and after they received a first injection of BST. So here we use a, um, um, a simple random sample of um, 60 cows and this is a matched pair design that is, uh, each cow we we uh, we look at the uh, milk production before and and, and after uh, after the uh, application after the injection of BST. Okay.
Okay, so I'm going to stop the video here. In the next video, we'll be looking at sampling designs.